Hello and welcome to another 3.1 release video. So in this video, I'm going to show you a new feature called flow templating and another feature which allows you to take template parameters and pull them from a third party source like a SQL database or a CSV file. Now, why would you need either one of these features? Uh, the first one, flow templating, is really good at a very common use case you'll find in manufacturing, which is, hey, I've got this machine. There's a certain tag or set of tags that represent the state of the machine. And I want to drive the movement of data based on a state change. So when the machine's on, I want to grab data and publish that to my unified namespace, which I'll use UNS in this example. Or, you know, in batch manufacturing, when the process changes or switches, I want to grab the state of the batch and move that to a historian or another system. So this is something we've always been able to do. But what happens when you want to do that? After you've done that for one asset, how do you do it for the next 100 that have very similar, let's say, OPC addressing? And that's where the templating comes in. So let me let me show you that. So first, we'll set up the simple use case that, again, we've always supported. Uh, and then we'll scale it. We'll show how to do that really fast. So in here, I've got two connections. I've got one to my OPC server and one to my local UNS, which I'm using the HiByte broker. So my OPC server, I'm connected to Kepware. And specifically, I'm going to look at pumps, which maybe isn't the most exciting thing. But, but for this example, it'll serve. And I've got these three pumps. So these pumps have a state uh, tag, as well as just some data on pressure, you know, rotations per minute kind of thing. So inside my inputs, I've referenced the branch for the pump. So you see this points to pump one. So if I do a test read on that, the data comes back, current state. And the other one I have is the actual individual tag. And right now that comes back as false. And you'll see why I've separated those uh, in a minute. I've decided to use modeling, you know, in this case. So in here, I'm modeling pressure, speed, the on state, the asset ID. And then I've created a single instance that maps into those OPC tags from the branch. So when I do a test read, you know, it runs through the model and I get this nice model data. And you can see that model's changing. So now I've got that all working. I want to publish that to a UNS. So in this case, I've created my MQTT connection with an output on Portland R&D pumps, pump, and then the, the pump ID. I've kind of dynamically put that in. So what I'll do is I'll go set up my flow. And I already kind of have this flow going. Uh, but to show you how it works, I'm taking the pump instance, that pump one, and I'm uh, pushing that out of uh, the MQTT output. And that's what's important here is uh, I'll set up a trigger. So let me actually, let me not set the trigger first. So I'll do uh, always publish, and I'll just turn this on. And what we'll see in the client is we're just getting publishes of the model data coming up through. So all that looks good. But let's say I don't want to publish every second in this example. What I actually want to do is on an event, uh, I want to publish out when there's a change. So what I'm going to do here is, I've already done it, but I'll do, I'll do this again just for example, is I'll go into the OPC tag, the individual state tag, because that's, that's the event I want to monitor. I don't want to read all these other tags. I just want to subscribe to this state tag, and I want to know when it changes state. And when that changes state, the flow is going to run, go read all the other inputs, and then publish out. So now if I go to my broker after saving that, let me clear. You'll see no, no messages are being, uh, not my broker, my client. You'll see no, no messages are being published into the UNS. Now if I bring up uh, the quick client in Kepware, and I go to pump one, and I change the state of that pump, to on, we'll see a message gets published. So hey, there was a state change, that flow detected it, went and read the rest of the data, published it out. Fantastic, right? We've done this for a single pump. But there's three others, right? And rather than copy all the inputs and the outputs, you know, how do I do that more efficiently so that if there's thousands of pumps, that's fast. All right, so we're going to use templating to do that. And what I'm going to do is, in the, in the flow configuration, the first thing I'm going to do is turn this off because I'm going to make some config changes and I don't want to inject data into the UNS. So I'm going to turn on templating. And the template parameter I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to leave the template name as is. We'll use static for now, and then I'm going to change this to dynamic. That's a new feature that I'll show you. So pump, pump ID, I'm going to range this from 1 to 3. And this range syntax is available. It's, it's documented in the user guide. It's the same as saying one, two, and three, but it's just shorthand. And again, that's for the three pumps that I have here. 
Okay, so I'm going to control that here, but that's at the flow level. So how do I inject that into here? Well, the answer is you pass it as a parameter. And the way that looks today, and eventually we have some UI around this, but um, this dot pump ID. What this syntax means is, hey, pass a pump ID parameter to the instance. And same for here, pass a pump ID parameter uh, to the input. Now, neither of those accept pump ID parameters. So the first thing we've got to do is go back to our input level. And rather than this point at pump one here, right, we've got, we have to make this point to the pump ID. So we're going to use the same parameter name. And that means, hey, when you call this input, you have to pass in the pump ID, and that's going to get inserted here. And we'll save that. The other part we need that, because we're using modeling in this flow, is in where we've passed it through the instance. The instance has to pass it again through the input. So this is all, again, this is manual right now. Eventually, we'll have some, uh, some UX around this. But it's still a very powerful feature. Uh, this dot pump ID. And I just want to copy this, because I'm going to have to do it everywhere. But I call into that branch. So. Again, I'm just passing the pump ID, and all these are getting the same ID. All right, so if I've done this right, uh, what this means now is when I go and enable this flow, the way to think about this is this identifier is going to range from 1 to 3. What's really going on behind the scenes is I'm going to create three flows, each with its own unique identifier, and that identifier is going to get passed to the instance, which then passes it to the input right, to make sure we're reading the correct OPC tag. And then it's also passed um, to the expression to make sure that each flow is subscribing to the correct state tag. So let's cross the fingers real quick. Fail to receive good update from source connection pump. OK, so I messed up uh, one of the inputs is what that means. So we, it's, it looked like we failed to subscribe. Uh, this pump ID dot state. That looks right. And we can test this by turning on templating down here and then providing a default value. So if I do this, that test read works. So that looks good. Uh, let's check here. Oh. So I forgot to update it in the other input. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just enable templating. Pump ID, put a default value so we can test this. That looks good. While we're doing that, let's go up to the instance and do the same thing. Let's just call this pump. We're going to turn on templating, provide a default value, and do a test read. That looks good. Okay, so we've got this all defined, right? So let's go back up to the flow and try. Turning that on again. Fail to receive good update for source connection OPC channel one pump state required by trigger expression. Uh, because I have a syntax error. There we go. <laughs> Can't wait for the, the UI dressing around this feature. Uh, connection OPC channel pump ID equal to this. There it is. All right, we're working through this together. So yeah, eventually we'll pop a UI and you can pass parameters in through that, but, but uh, currently you have to get the syntax somewhat manually. So what this means now is I actually kind of have, what I have actually is three virtual flows. And this statistics will show the summary, the kind of the aggregate of all the statistics of all the flows. So behind the scenes, think of this as almost like you manually created three flows with this configuration. Now the one catch here is I'm pretty sure before I run this test, let me cancel this. I want to make sure those simulated addresses are different in Kepware, otherwise, and I don't think they are. I think I got lazy. Uh, yeah, they're not. So let me just change these so that you'll see how this fires. 
otherwise when I updated the quick client, all three would have, uh, I believe, fired at the same time. All right, so that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is launch the quick client. And we got some publishes for like first initial value, right? I'm going to clear those out. And we're having no publishes right now. So now if I come in and I take pump one and I change its state by issuing a write, Uh, by issuing a write. Oh, I'm writing to the asset ID. <laughs> it's one of those days. More coffee. All right. I'm going to write to the state attribute. Zero. There we go. So now we have a state change, and that means pump one should have fired. Brilliant. So now if we go to pump two and change its state to true, pump two will fire because they're, they're independent flows. The other cool thing we added, which we, we, did, we really didn't want to, but being in manufacturing, as long as we have, we know this exists. <laughs> this, this need exists. You can have a trigger delay. So when this, say this machine changes state, we want to wait X amount of seconds, some kind of fudge factor, to then go read the rest of the data because maybe it was a batch change, but the registers and the PLC haven't updated yet. So you want to delay a few seconds before you go out and kind of build the instance up. So that's in there as well. So this is all functioning fantastic. Now let's say... I actually want to drive this from a database or third party. So this thing I don't want to be statically configured because I don't have to come into Highbyte and do uh, one of these or these or add stuff as it comes. So what does that look like? All right, so I'm going to first turn this off. And uh, I'm going to remove the static address. And I'm going to change to dynamic. So dynamic means, hey, go grab a reference from any other inputs. This could come over MQTT, SQL, CSV, you name it, right? In this case, we're going we're gonna to generate it over CSV. So what I've done is I've gone in and created a template, CSV file. If we just open that with, I want a notepad, but we'll, WordPad will suffice. So this is just CSV, right? So what I'm going to do in Highbyte is I'm going to come in and create a CSV connection for the template settings. And I'm going to put the file, C uh, files, I think it's template, for my directory. And I'm going to create an input. I'm going to call this pump template. Uh, create that and do a test read. And what should come back is the pump data. So this is essentially template parameters. Each one of these. You know, this is the manual um, pump ID template parameter you put in there, and there's the first value. Here's the, the next value, et cetera. So we did the 1-3. This is the equivalent, but it also brings in other template parameters that we could use, but we don't have to, right? Like name, area, et cetera. We could use those row number in this, in this case. But basically, those template parameters are projected, and each one of these rows represents a flow that's going to be configured with these optional settings. So now what I'm going to do is go to my flow, and instead of, again, instead of defining this statically, I'm going to switch to dynamic, and I'm going to go to input, CSV, and pull in the template params, and hit save. And this is going to turn into the same configuration. So if I enable this now, there's no difference. So the pump ID is being read on each one of those rows from the CSV file and being fed into the same input. So if I look here, no changes. Uh, if I go to pump three and change the state, uh, we'll expect pump three to publish, just like before. And what's really cool about this is if I now go to the CSV file, and add pump four. And the one the one catches here, well, there's two catches. First, this has to exist in, in the server, right? So pump four is here. Uh, I'm going to switch this address real quick, just so it's independent. So I've created pump four. I've created pump four in the CSV file and saved it. Now, if I resave the flow, pump four is automatically, or you could restart high byte or just resave the flow. 
pump four will automatically be brought up. So now if I come in here, I'll have to relaunch the quick client. Uh, and pump four is here. So I'm gonna write to the pump four state and there's no, no update on pump four. Oop, let me just make sure the flow's on. Yep, we're good. Uh, so I'm going to change the state, and what I'm going to get is pump 4, which is called pump 3, I think. Why is it called pump 3? I think because the asset ID field, did I update that? Pump 3. Did I write to pump 3? No, I wrote to pump 4. Synchronous right. Let's try it again. Let's go back to zero. It still says pump three. So asset ID. Is pump three. Why? Let's go into the instance. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, I haven't updated it in here, right? I didn't go and write to this. So the asset ID is being pulled from the OPC server, and I, I failed to uh, update. It looks like it's a constant, too, so I can't, I cannot write to it. Anyway, uh, since I'm pulling that from here, pump, pump three and four are the same. So we fumbled through this a little bit, but, you know, uh, real-time debugging anyway. So you can see now... Uh, you know, this demo shows that template parameters can be used in a flow. It's really virtually creating end flows. You can pass those parameters, either if they're statically defined or dynamically, to your inputs and instances. And you can enable this use case of having one flow that monitors thousands of machines, looks for a state change, and then publishes their information into a UNS or database, etc. Uh, so try it out and send us your feedback.